Well, welcome to another segment of Meet a Senator. So today I am very pleased to have with me Senator Click Bishop. So welcome, Senator Bishop. Thanks for joining us today. Um, tell us, first of all, what, you re what district you represent, where your area is. Uh, Senate District C, and it encompasses House District 5 and, and House Di District 6, and that's uh, the western part of, of Fairbanks on District 5, includes the University Campus, Cheena Ridge, University West, uh, all borders right up to the, uh, the um, Parks Highway there at Esther, and goes all the way down the parks to Cantwell, across the, the uh, Denali Highway to Paxson, down the Richardson, <clears throat> all the way to um, uh, almost Tonsina, down the Edgerton Cutoff to almost Cordova, uh, over then go due east until you hit the Canadian border, just skipping the the, the beach, and uh, that Senator Stevens's district. I don't get to Tidewater, but all the way to the Canadian border, then straight up the Canadian border, over the Brooks Range into Anwar, and then go back west. Hit the Dalton Highway, probably about uh, Franklin Bluffs, and uh, if you're familiar with the old pipeline camps, come down the, the uh, Dalton, uh, and and then the Kaikook River, border that all the way down till it goes into the uh, uh, Yukon, down to Cockrines, just this side of Ruby, back up around Minchumina, and it's huge. Wow. <laughs> so. That is huge. Yeah. Wow. Now, in describing it, you mentioned a pipeline camp. Mm -hmm. So tell us about your path that led you to being a state senator. So I'll, when I took my SAT test uh, uh, there in high school, later my counselor called and brought me into the office when the test results came back and and she was a little sad and actually maybe had a little tear in her eye and had a little tissue and I thought maybe somebody had passed away in her family or something and she says you know your scores weren't that good and you're probably going to have to go work with your hands but you did score off the chart on the on the uh, mechanical aptitude portion of the test and you should probably go work with your hands you know be a tradesperson and and I was just so happy because she didn't know that I've known what my career path is going to be since I was about two or three years old when I could first comprehend. You know, I'm a third generation operating engineer, run, operate heavy equipment. Fast forward, graduated midterm in Lathrop High School, December. Two days later, I was uh, uh, dispatched out of the operating engineers and, and I was working on the Trans-Alaska Pipeline. So uh, did that, fast forward uh, I worked in the field for 18 years and then uh, w went in and interviewed and was selected to run the, our apprentice, statewide apprenticeship program for the operating engineers and I did that for 18 years. And uh, then after the 2006 election, <clears throat> there was a voicemail on our phone recorder at home from Governor Sarah Palin to ask me to come to Juneau to uh, be Commissioner of Labor. So. Her and I had several conversations, and I said no at first, respectfully. Uh, I just, you know, my career was, I was in my comfort zone, and, and uh, my organization was running like a Swiss watch, and I, not that I was oblivious to politics, I know how it works, but I didn't want to come down here and fail her or fail my family or, you know, my, I'm, I'm only like four years from retirement. I'm, 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 I'm coasting here, if you will, you know, <laughs> and I didn't want to. That was my biggest fear, but I, I came. I finally, she, she's, she's convincing, and she said, you need to come and do your civic duty for the people of Alaska. So that got me, because I do like to help people, and, and uh, served six years over her administration, Governor Parnell's administration, he kept me. And uh, then I uh, finally, you know, if you're really working your job as a commissioner, you're never off, you're on, all the time even when you're off you're on right you're never really off because you've got your phone and <clears throat> being a, a cabinet member j just recently like with this earthquake right when i was on we we all have a role to play in a, in an emergency response 
right? We all have a, have a role to play as cabinet officials, right? And Governor Parnell was very cognizant of that and took it very serious. We all went and, and, and trained at, at Jay Bear with the Emergency Response Coordination Center. We all had our go bags. We all had our sat phones. And uh, 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 the, when I was on, we had that uh, volcano uh, eruption and, 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 and Drift River had to be evacuated, right? So anyway, so you're on the phone, so you're never off. So anyway, long story short, six years, I, I wanted to move on and, and, and go and just stay at the creek, right? And uh, uh, then some colleagues said, well, you need to think about running for the Senate. So here I go again. You know, I'm a sucker for helping people. And, and I was fortunate to get elected and reelected and reelected again. So here I am. But I'm not, I'm not looking to be a lifetime fixture here. <laughs> so you just mentioned, as you were talking about the transition from being commissioner to being state senator, you just wanted to spend time on the creek. Right. What does that mean? I, uh, <clears throat> so it's in my genetics mining. My, my great, great uncle was a 49er in the California gold rush. Uh, he crossed the plains three times with three different oxen trains from St. Joseph, Missouri to California, uh, was a prominent pioneer in California in the gold rush and in the, the making of California. Um, there's a town in California named after him, Bishop, California, and and uh, so quite quite a history there with 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 his mining uh, uh, experiences. My grandfather was a clay miner in Missouri. They, they use um, that part of the Midwest is there's about three counties there where that clay is such high value. There's only a certain kind of clay that can make refractory fire brick and or fire brick or bricks for home and building construction, right? So, and then I love mining. I'm a mining nut on, on the history of Alaska, the Klondike, the, the Alaska uh, 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 gold rush. And then my wife's great-great-grandfather, uh, uh, part Koyukon Athabascan Russian was a miner and a trader and made discovery in Rampart 1893 and so anyway it's just you know you can't grow up in Fairbanks and not be impacted by mining right or any anywhere in Alaska really right we're sitting here in Juneau right the two largest hard rock mines in the world in 1900s so uh, it's just it's just in my DNA and I just I love the history I love the people I love the camaraderie and it's not a better place that you can raise a, a kid is on the creek very interesting so so and and it also combines with your heavy equipment right uh, expertise right you're using lots of heavy equipment yeah to be a good miner starter you need good ground to start with sure you got it it's got to be there uh, but you know you have to be you have to be an operator you have to be a, mecha a, a mechanic you have to be a prospector you have to be a geologist and you have to have a lot of optimism and enthusiasm because if you don't it, I, and I relate that to the oil business with what we see on the North Slope as a geologist you know if if you don't have a good attitude this is click talking if you don't have a good attitude about exploration and, and have some guts to, to, to get out there on the front end, you, you're, you're not going to make it in this business. That's Very my good. opinion. Yes. So, so you talked about optimism, and you certainly have, have described hard work. Mm -hmm. So here in the legislature, you're a member of the Finance Committee. Mm -hmm. You chair the Community and Regional Affairs Committee, mm -hmm. which is an interesting connection with the size of your district, right? Mm -hmm. Certainly mm -hmm. um, rural areas. Um, you are the vice chair of legislative budget and audit. Mm -hmm. You also serve on labor and commerce. Um, what other committees are you on? You're on several. You're on resources. Resources. Good. So, so with that, that breadth of assignment, I mean, that's, that's a lot of assignments. Mm -hmm. what, what are your goals for this session? What are you focused on as a senator? Well... 
given people hope because people are are people are are I'm not going to use people are concerned. I want to be careful how I parse my words here. People are concerned about the budget. I'll I'll give the but the governor credit on the fact that he he has got everybody's attention with the proposed budget that the administration put in. And I'll just boil it down a couple a couple of things to 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 make my point. I know for myself I've been spending 6 to 8 to 10 hours a weekend since the budget was introduced answering emails. Now, I don't answer them every every day. I just don't have the time in my schedule. And I won't let my staff answer the emails back. Now, if they're a, a form email like you know that we get for, you know, many of these topics, that's fine. But when it's an individual that's got a uh, 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 has written a letter, has taken the time to write a letter on this on the budget, then I'm taking the time to sit down and read what they wrote, write them back, albeit it won't be three pages, single spaced, six paragraphs per page. I don't, I don't have that time. Uh, or if they leave a phone number, I will call them. But I have got more emails on this budget than anything I have gotten since I've been in the Senate. And you know we've had some pretty big topics in front of us over my tenure here in the Senate. And what really drove it home is the breadth and depth that people are paying attention is I have an individual that uh, uh, when I'm home, I have a routine on Sunday morning and it's after early service, I go to the store and I am friends with a guy in there just as an acquaintance that works at the store. He, he knows he doesn't know my name. He doesn't know what I do. And. Uh, but we just greet each other, right? And he works at, at, the, at the grocery store. So Sunday morning after church last week, how's it going? He says, I'm really concerned. I'm worried about the people that might lose their jobs. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm wondering how they're going to make it, you know? And I'm really concerned about that. This guy's a, he's a, a retiree from another career. Uh, and this is just a part-time job. He's an active retiree. I call him an active retiree, right? And, and I said, well, do you know my name? And he says, no. I said, ask him, do you know what I do? And he says, no. I says, I, and I'm not saying his name for, for a reason. I, I just said, I want you to, to, to relax. And I told him what I did. And then he says, well, that's good. He says, you seem like you've got common sense. And I says, well... I would agree with that. But I said, I want you to know, I feel in my heart at the end of the day that the legislature, both chambers, is going to send a common sense, realistic budget back to the administration for a look. Notwithstanding, we should always look for efficiencies and keep downward pressure on the budget. But I think this was too much, too hard, too fast. So... Very good. Well, thank you so much, Senator Bishop, for spending time with us. And I appreciate uh, it. And I'm really thrilled that the people that will see this videotape will get to know you better mm -hmm. and understand that you are a common sense person and, and, and you're here working hard for the people of Alaska. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying these segments. This was a great opportunity for you to meet Senator Bishop and and really see what a great, hardworking Alaskan he is. Thanks so much for joining us.